Hey there, welcome to another quick guide on Ruby on Rails. This is gonna be for rendering RSS feeds in your Rails app. Commonly, this is a thing, say if you have content that's a newsletter style of content or something with a feed, you're gonna to wanna to have this as just a backup for people to subscribe to. It's a great way to have people who aren't necessarily visiting your site still digest the content and you know become a loyal subscriber. I've built some newsletter stuff on the side on my blog in particular, it's completely built from Rails instead of like adapting to something like Medium or whatever. Uh, I just prefer the control. It's just more customizable and, and whatnot. I can add and remove things at, at needed. The RSS side of that equation isn't widely used, but I find it useful just to have. Years ago, RSS used to be like the norm. So before all you, you had these, I guess social media kind of was the, the breaking of that chain. but the idea of getting content to other people was either through email or RSS feed. And there wasn't really a place to just share links constantly or, or have like these link aggregators like uh, Y Combinator, what is it called? Uh, news ha Hacker News kind of stuff. Um, so now nowadays it's less common, but it is something still in use. And with Rails, you could still use it. I don't think support is maybe shipping in the app by default. I could be wrong. I feel like I read something where they were removing RSS, but I could be wrong. We're gonna prove that policy today uh, by seeing if it works. So I, I haven't actually run through this, but I'm, I've done it in the past. I just wanna show you what I would do just to get an RSS feed going. Um, on your root app, I'm gonna to refer to it over here on the left. It's gonna just have a posts data type. So we have a post model that has a uh, title and a content column. Uh, if you go to the schema, oops, Raycast here schema. We have a post table with a title and a content uh, column. We get the created app, updated app for free. So that comes with the app. That's just the basic uh, look and feel of it right now. I've got some basic Tailwind that I used when I installed the app. I just default to Tailwind these days. So that's that. You can view the post and here's this, the show page. Notice it's ID of one and edit back, destroy all those Railsy things. So the, the premise of this is while you can see and display the posts on the website, I still want that external link for RSS. So to do that, we're gonna actually render XML and that's gonna be a different data type than HTML. So Rails, if you're familiar, maybe you're not, uh, on the controller layer, you can render more than one response type um, and that would you know, re respond to a certain type. If you've ever seen this block in your controller, that allows you to do more than one type of response. So see, here you could see a format HTML, JSON, that's part of like a scaffold. When you, when you run a scaffold for Rails, this is what you'll see commonly. And that's just you know, common to do that. So in our case, for our index path, we can render it separately uh, to, to render a different format. So what I'll do is start at our application layer, and I'm actually gonna to refer to a very old guide on Railscast, and on here he's gonna have Atom feed, and Atom's kind of another version of RSS. Um, I guess it was just a way to elegantly write it. I could be wrong, I think it's a wrapper for how to do that. But what we wanna focus on is adding a discovery link tag to the app, and this will give us that that basis of when someone links to the app, they can you know kind of automatically discover that there is something like RSS uh, when you get into adding your website to one of those readers. So if you say format RSS is what we're going to shoot for here, and since we called it posts, I'm going to use posts, and you'll want to have the absolute URL. So notice the underscore URL instead of path, which you typically use in the app. We will use URL in this case. And that's going to have basically the URL in the end, once the, the site is in production environment, that when people link to the site, they'll be able to discover that RSS feed under the hood. So this can live in your application uh, layout. And your blog doesn't necessarily, assuming it's a blog or a newsletter or whatever, it doesn't have to live you know, on the same page as the discovery tag, uh, but maybe it you know, would normally do so. So in, in the tutorials case here, it's going to just the articles page and you could scope it to that. I'm just gonna put it for the global uh, application layout, which is essentially every page. Uh, feel free to change that if you want it to be a little more explicit though. So you'd, you could do like a content for and have a yield, like he's showing in this tutorial, yield head. Maybe we'll just follow suit. 
to make it a little clearer. So instead of that, I'll go back to this index page and up here we can say content for head do then you can just add that link there. So now only on this page, which I've rooted to in the app, uh, will this display. So if you look at the console and right here, you'll see application RSS plus X, X, uh, XML. That's just telling it, instructing it, giving it a hint essentially that that's that type of data that's going to come through this link. And the post RSS is going to be where we render that data back. So to get that to work right now, we have uh, JSON over here, but we probably want to do a um, builder file for the index here. So if you notice, we're serving the post index path there. We want to follow suit and have a post index RSS builder. So it's kind of confusing. And it's in fact, instead of RSS, I think we're going to do XML. So I'll copy this. This stuff still works. We can do it like so. And you'll want to set a title. I, I have no idea, like RSS Rails, just for the context description, some random description. Now, if you aren't certain this, if you ever think about podcasts, this is literally how they're served. So that's the same type of data. Um, the format and all that stuff, it's all XML under the hood. So when you subscribe to a podcast feed, it's the same principles here. It's pretty neat. I think that's all due for disruption though. So we'll see how that goes. So then you can get your posts and I'll just update all the article areas, so posts, URL. So each, um, XML item, you're going to have the title and description typically on an XML feed. It's going to have some predetermined, um, attributes on it. So this is just like conventions in that, that world. So if you see this like pub date description title, that's going to be like normal. You almost want to have that. Um, and that's just for the sake of adapting to other areas, like say it's Apple podcasts or some sort of other news newsletter rendering um, engine, they're going to want to know like uh, those specific things because they're going to be expecting that back. So the title, for instance, is standardized. The description is pretty standard. So and then the pub, pub date comes like this. And this is a specific format you'll see commonly in a RSS feed. It's kind of confusing, but it, you know, it works. So instead of publish that, we don't have that in our database. So I'll just say create it out for now. And then the link is going to be just the URL to it with the post. And then the GUID is, this is, it's like a unique identifier and you could use the same post URL, uh, since that will be unique, uh, but you could use like a randomized hash, something like that too. Just definitely want it to be unique per post or item here. So in theory, this should, uh, just pick up with rails. Um, if we, maybe for grins, we'll reboot the server. Okay. And to test this out, you could go to slash posts dot, I think it's XML and I have an issue here. So it would be title instead, cause that's in my database. So there we go. So now this is XML, but notice it's formatted as RSS, which is what we want. Um, you could, I think maybe try RSS here and see if it responds curious if it does with the newer versions of rails. So instead of posts, you could say RSS, it might just work. It could work. looks like the, f the formatting is a little weird, but that just might be my browser. Um, I'm going to keep it as XML cause I'm pretty sure that's going to work regardless. Um, so there we go. But this is, um, stuff that is just like standardized. So you get this channel information. And then for each item that's on that channel, uh, it's going to be RSS related. So we've got our title description link of the main, uh, blog, I guess we'll call it. And then for each blog post or, you know, content block will have its own separate item. So this is kind of how that all works. And you get this updated feed that, you know, as your app updates, this will update. And then that can ping feed catchers or podcast catchers as you commonly hear here. 
and update those as well. So you'll basically, if you're ever subscribed to a podcast, you'll notice if new episodes come in, it's because their their RSS feed updated. So whatever service they're hosting it on is responsible for serving that RSS feed. So like say transistor.fm, if you've ever heard of them, they're making this RSS feed on their back end. So they're they're taking all that weight off your soldiers if you're signed up with them and are able to deploy it in such a way that um, contains your album artwork, your you know show notes, all that stuff, and it's just automatic and it's super useful. This is just kind of a, an insight into that world. There's a lot more I didn't cover, but this is how you could you know create your own newsletter, um, podcast catcher, anything like that. And it's uh, an eye into the RSS world that Rails kind of supports out of the box, which is a big reason you know I love the the framework. Hopefully that was helpful. If you remember. In the controller, there's no, uh, like, I don't need to physically write this stuff. If you just have that naming convention here, the, like uh, JSON, JBuilder. So if I were to go to JSON the same way, JSON. So it's just the, the cool built-in perks of the framework. Here's our XML. So it's the same data. It just piped through differently, and you could serve it to different resources wherever you need to. You could do things, uh, I think, what's, what else could you do? Um, JSON, XML, RSS, Atom, I think was one that you might be able to use. Um, I'm, I'm blanking, but there's probably more you can do there to render this stuff in such a way that your app can respond to, or maybe you're creating an API, for instance. This is a way to serve the JSON back that doesn't necessarily display to the view. So maybe your Rails app is an API-driven app. That's one approach you could take instead of just having uh, it all come from the controller. If you want to go deeper on this, I'm probably considering building a new little like newsletter engine. That's what could be like a small SaaS, maybe just as another let's build as an idea. Uh, I think that'd be fun to build. I kind of already have built one of those for other clientele. So it's just one of those things that I could perfect and see ways I could improve. All right. That's all for now. See ya.